Ash, um, is it a fair assumption that Thomas Grice is your goalie tonight? It's a fair assumption. Can you talk about uh, how impressed you are just by him holding things together as, uh, as your team has struggled to score goals for him? Yeah, I mean, it's been, on, you know, really un unfortunate for him. I mean, he, he's, you know, I don't know what the goal support is exactly. I don't know the exact number. I know I talked to our goalie coach after the last game. We were talking about how little run support he's gotten. And for the most part, he's played, you know, real good hockey for us. Went through a little stretch there where I think, uh, he struggled a little bit like everybody's going to do. And, and when, when there's only one guy, you know, you know when you're going with the same guy over and over, uh, not everybody's going to be at their best every single night. And that's why, you know, uh, our plan going the year was to have Bernie and him kind of flip-flopping lots. But, um, you know, he's played good hockey. Uh, the one thing I like about Thomas is he's, he's unflappable. He doesn't get rattled uh, at all. Uh, he's a really even killed person. So, you know, the lack of run support isn't going to eat away at him. He's just going to keep going out and playing. And that's just the way that, that, that he attacks things. And hopefully we can get him more run support as we go forward. Is it about the longest run you've had of, of one goalie of using only one goalie? Uh, you know, it's, that's, I can't answer that for sure. I think we went through stretches, um, at different times since I've been here where, you know, we've, we've just used one, but it's, you know, it's certainly a long run and, and not necessarily, you know, not at all the plan probably going in, but that's what happens. I mean, injuries happen and guys have to, to step up and, and, uh, you know, Tom's done a good job with it. Is there a Bernier update? Uh, very close. Very close. Um, I'm hoping that, that he's available for Saturday, um, but I don't know that yet. Thanks, Jeff. Next up, Helene St. James, Detroit Free Press. Hi, Jeff. Uh, what, what have you been, uh, your impressions of, of Christian Juice so far? Uh, you know, I think Christian's done a, done a solid job. I think he's, he's kind of come as, as advertised. He's a, he's a really good puck mover. Um, he's got really good poise with the puck. He's a little bit different than what we have in a, in a lot of ways. Um, on the back end, we've got a lot of guys that are good defenders that are, uh, you know, fine with the puck. He's a, he, he's a real good uh, passer. The puck has really good poise. Um, he's a power play type guy. Um, I think he's had fairly good smarts in the power play. I think he's somebody that can help our power play be better, but, you know, we've yet to, to show that or prove that. Um, so we'll keep watching and seeing. We haven't had lots of them. Uh, we've had a lot of low penalty games, which is uh, obviously fine with me given the status of our specialty teams. But, um, you know, when you don't have lots of them, you don't get quite as much looks as you want to see. But, but he seems to be somebody who, who's good at those things. So um, overall, I've liked him. And, and I know uh, he had to quarantine after traveling commercially and such. So you, you guys didn't get a ton of practice looks with him. But you seem like you were fairly comfortable uh, right off the bat uh, going to him and um, and using him on, on the power play uh, as well, especially. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when, when you have somebody who's – that's kind of what their job is or what they're really good at, um, you, you got to let them do it and see how good they are at it and see how much they can help your team. And, and um, you know, originally we weren't going to play him in the game that he played first, but just the way it, got, it, it worked out uh, because of COVID and – uh, he ended up playing in that game in Chicago, I believe it was, and uh, kind of got thrown to the wolves a little bit without any uh, practices. And, and I think he's gotten more comfortable with our systems. Uh, um, you know, he's a guy who, uh, has, having played in Washington, their team that gaps a lot in the neutral zone with their defensemen. So for a guy that's not a great skater, he still gaps pretty good, and, and, and that's the way we want to play. So I think sometimes uh, it helps having played in similar systems, and, and he seems to be adapting fairly well. And just uh, with Tyler Bertuzzi, do you anticipate him being able to practice with you guys next week, or is there? I don't have that answer today. Um, you know, I, I can just say that he has not been on the ice yet. So um, I don't have the answer whether he'll be practicing once we get back or not. Um, you know, but he has not been on the ice yet. Thank you. Yeah. Next up, Anthar Khan, I'm live. Hey, Jeff, uh, over the last three games, uh, averaging uh, more than 30 shots, are you also seeing a, a, an uptick in, in scoring chances? And uh, do you attribute, uh, would you attribute that to just having a fuller lineup with the, the guys from COVID back? Well, we're a better hockey team with the five guys back in the lineup. That's just the fact. And, and that's just the reality of it. Um, you know, when you miss five guys, 
Uh, lots of times, unless you're just super, super deep, you're not as good a hockey team. And we're a better hockey team now that we're back in the lineup. So with that, I think comes more zone time. And, and with more zone time comes more shots. Um, I actually think we've passed up some shots in the last few games that uh, that I think we could still have opportunities to shoot more. Um, I would also say, I'm sorry, every building's a little bit different, how they how they count shots. And I think Florida is a little bit high, personally. Um, they seem to... to be pretty easy to give shots away, but but uh, in terms of the uptick in scoring chances, we've had a, we've had a, a, enough scoring chances in 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 each of those games, including the Tampa game, the last three games to win the hockey game, and you know we, we've been in that range of. Uh, everybody counts them differently, uh, but we've been in that range for us around 13, 12. Uh, uh, you know, that's generally enough to, to win a hockey game. A real high night is, is like 18 and a real low night would be, you know, like five. So we've been in a range to, certainly enough to, to, to create uh, or to win the hockey game. And, and what do I attribute that to? I attribute that to two things, checking better. Uh, when you check better, you have a puck way more. And, and two, uh, are having a much fuller lineup. And uh, uh, Luke Lenny, is he available tonight? He is not available tonight. Thanks. Yep. Next question from Max Coltman with the Athletics. Hey, Jeff, Jeff I wanted to ask you about uh, Zadina and, and Larkin playing together. What do you like about them as a, as a combo, and what have you thought of how they've done together so far? Well, you know, I think um, one of the things that uh, – that, that Zadina has done a good job is, is, is improve his give and go game. So, you know, I know you have two really talented offensive players. Larkin's a guy that um, will certainly go get the puck and he's a guy who's really good transporting the puck up the ice um, and, and he's become a good passer. So, you know, now you have a guy in his wing that can, that can score some of them in the same similar attributes to, uh, you know, when, when Larks has played with Mantha. Um, you know, Zadine is a guy who can score. He can also give and go. He's got good hockey sense for for a guy who's been able to score. I think he's more than that. Um, he's also a guy that will go get pucks and, and go try to win pucks. So I think it's been a, uh, you know, it's been a, a good, you know, a, a solid match so far. Um, it, it, if, if it does it allows us to spread our lineup. Uh, I think that's critical. And, um, you know, I've said it lots. I, I don't think we can be a one line team. Well, I know we can't. And, uh, and so if it, if, if that allows, uh, you know, Larks to have a good offensive play in Zadina and then Mantha playing another line and maybe Bobby Ryan play on another line. Now you've got, uh, you know, scoring spread out throughout your lineup and you can kind of roll lines and shorter shifts and uh, get everybody into the game more. Sometimes it, it, you hear people talk about how it, it takes players time to learn how to play with the team team's kind of number one center is Dylan a guy who it takes time with or or is that do you see someone you can kind of plug and play because it seems like they've had good chemistry so far yeah I would say you know I, I've coached some guys and I'm not going to name names but I've coached guys who are great 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 offensive players that that are you know are a little bit unique and and therefore can be uh harder to to, to find you know good matches with their line um, I won't say that's the case with Dylan. I think it's a, it's a plug and play. I think he's a, a fairly straightforward player and, and it doesn't, it's not a, there's not a, a uniqueness to his game that you have to get used to. So, um, you know, so I think it's a, you know, again, with a guy like Zadina, I think it, it can be an, an easy transition. I think the biggest thing when, you know, you put young players with uh, guys in your team that are uh, some of the better players is that you don't want to defer. You just want to play and you want to make the right play all the time. And sometimes guys will defer to really good players. And, you know, Z's just made the right play. I think he's super comfortable that he belongs uh, in, in a top role. Um, I think he thinks that, and I think he's out to prove it every day. And, and because of that, I think he, he goes out and he does what he thinks is right in every situation. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Last question from Seth Colton for Detroit News. Hey, Jeff, a little bit out of your job description. But let me ask you, I mean, there's been a lot of talk here lately about pushing the draft back a year. I mean, you've evaluated talent over the years and why not? Can you see that line of thinking, why there's that talk this year? Well, I can certainly see the line of thinking. I mean, there's been a whole bunch of group of players that haven't played. And how, how do you evaluate guys that haven't played? It doesn't seem to be uh, right, I guess. I don't want to use the word fair. I would just say right. Like now you're really, I mean, I think the draft that the 18-year-old 
uh, birth year is extremely hard anyways. Um, probably really should be a later draft. Uh, I certainly would allow teams to get it more right. And so now you've got already a really hard, hard, complex job um, and, and you can't get a chance to evaluate. I'm not sure how, you know, you're able to make those decisions then. Now there's lots that go into it and I haven't looked at all at the scenarios. Um, you know, so there'd be a lot of different factors that you'd have to consider in making these decisions. But certainly I would understand why they're looking at it. I mean, most of those kids probably wouldn't jump into an NHL lineup right off the bat anyway. So even if they did, Ted, most of the time, 99% of the time, it's probably not the best thing for them. And, and, you know, every once in a while you get a guy who, who it doesn't, you know, almost has to play like, you know, a guy mm -hmm. like Matthews and McDavid, you know, that are just so good at that level that they have to walk in and play. But most of even the top picks, like really, if you really look, at their first years, most of them would probably would have been better served playing somewhere else. And so if this def de delays that a little bit, then I think that's the positive for those uh, individuals' development. It's actually a team you're not gonna, you haven't seen yet tonight. What, from what you've seen in Nashville on tape, I mean, what's going on there? What kind of team are they? Well, I know, you know, I know their coach well. Um, he's an excellent coach, and I know that uh, they're, they're, you know, his teams always have been really good defensively. Uh, I think this team's always have played very, very hard. I think they've played with detail. Um, you know, I think they've had a really hard schedule here. Um, I know they've played, I think they've lost to Tampa four times. I think they lost to Dallas at least twice. That's the two best teams in our in our division by, you know, for sure. I mean, they're the two, you know, defending Stanley Cup uh, finalists. So, like, you know, I think that skewed Nashville's record a little bit and then it hurts your confidence and maybe, you know, you're not playing at the top of your game. But I, I suspect by the end of the year um, that Nashville will be a team that's competing right there for, for one of the top four spots in our division. So we'll, we'll have a, a good battle here tonight. I'm more concerned really about us making sure that we don't take any steps backwards here, that we're taking steps forwards and that we're taking that next step. And that next step's a big step and that's finding ways to win close games. Johnny, thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We'll be back shortly with the next game.